Hey everyone, hope you're doing well. So today we're going to be looking into Recoil. Um, Recoil is a state management tool for React. It was released uh, a few days ago. It's very much in the early stages, still in kind of beta mode, so um, not quite ready for production, but um, definitely worth a look if you haven't heard of it. Um, so first we'll go into why we need state management tools at all, so very briefly, and then we'll jump into a, a practical example and see how, how it's used. So yeah, let's jump into it. So let's assume we have uh, a very basic application right now, basically this, this nav bar, we've got this body um, which has a username in the profile. So we've got the username and we have an input where we can update update the state of that username. So in terms of components, what does that look like? We have you know our root component uh, app at the top level, we maybe have nav and body, and then we have this kind of profile component. And you may notice that this, this state here is kept you know, it belongs to the profile component here, right? So it's the local state. And in terms of a component tree, this is what that looks like, right? So we have, again, the root component, the two child components, and then the profile with, with the username state. Now, the issue comes when we get the new requirement of, hey, we wanna, we wanna have the username uh, in the nav bar here at the top, right? The same username. And we also wanna add this character counter uh, down here. Um, and obviously this relies on on the username state and if we look at the component tree of that we can see where the where the issue is so if you are, f are familiar with react um, you know there's kind of two ways to, to maintain or to keep state which is um, one way is directly in the component using some sort of local state uh, and the second way is using props uh, props are kind of single direction so they can uh, you know you can pass props to the children but you can't pass props or kind of local state across between two um, between two components um, and you know you can't pass it across so this causes a, an issue if we want to have the same piece of state across all these all these components right um, and there's a few ways to, to solve this you know the, very, the kind of the most simple way is you know you could just lift the state up right so you can say hey let's let's keep this username state in the app component and then we'll just pass it you know as props all the way down we'll go through the body and all the way down the count this will work um, for very very kind of basic applications, but definitely doesn't scale well, um, and it clutters up the code quite a lot. So it's, it's not you know it's not the best approach. Um, and there are a few other tools out there. Uh, if you've heard of Redux, is probably one of the, the most popular ones. You can use React Context, and now we have Recall, um, and an over oversimplified version of how these kind of state management tools work is basically they they take the state and keep them. Um, separate from the components themselves and that way each component can just you know fetch out and pull pull the state it needs uh, from you know in this case from recall so yeah let's uh, let's have a look at an example of, of building this um, so we're going to start from scratch I'm just going to create a react app called uh, react tutorial I'm going to give that a few seconds to initialize Cool, so that's that ready now. Um, I'm just gonna all go into uh, app.js and app CSS, And we're just gonna actually, first thing we're gonna do is we're just gonna run this to make sure it's all uh, hooked up fine. So I hit npm start. I've got the browser here on the right hand side so we can see all the changes we're making. And I'm gonna do, I'm gonna zoom in a bit. There we go. So we're going to remove essentially everything from this CSS file. We'll zoom in here a bit as well. Hopefully that's, that's big enough. And we're going to remove everything from app.js. Now the only thing I'm going to add to this CSS file is um, very little styling to the nav and body. And this is not really relevant for tutorial. This is just to kind of show the separation of the, the components. Cool. So we had the app component here. And we know that we're going to add a... Uh, nav bar, body, and profile component to start with. So let's get them in. So we've got the nav component, uh, the body component here, and the profile component. So we said that the app is going to show uh, the nav component, and it's also going to show the body. Here we go. Cool. And the body will just simply show the profile. Perfect, and let's just make sure that we update this to be nav and body. We can ignore everything else not being used, and same here. And then in the profile, 
we're just going to show our header which is just uh yeah profile i'm going to have the the name here in this case just pop in my name if i can spell it correctly there we go and we're just going to have an input perfect uh i'll just pop type text there we go so this is kind of the the starting point um so the first thing we want to do is make sure that the input here updates uh the state of the, the username that we have there um what we can do is use uh, react hooks um so we will destructure that we'll just call it username and set username here and we use use state so that's just been imported at the top here directly from react remove that and we give it a default. So I'm just going to give it a default of red for now. Um, and then what we can do is take that username and just replace the actual username there in brackets. So you can see that that's showing up here on the right. And then we'll update the um, input to set that as its value. And we'll also update it on change. So anytime we update it, it's going to set the username to the value, which is in event.target.value there we go so now we have the input as we type we have these two pieces of state that's fine this is what we kind of start with and this is where we start working on the, the new requirements and we can see here that the state is kept inside the profile right so no other components have any access to it and like i said we could in theory you know move this all up um, all the way up to the app and then you know pass it through as props and feed all this through down but that's not going to be a scalable solution and this is where recoil comes in so if we do an npm install recoil we're going to add that in and see how it affects things cool so that's that added i'm just going to make sure that's in package json yeah so we've got recoil there so recoil has two concepts or a few concepts one of the main ones is um atoms right and atoms is essentially um the units of state so essentially where you would use uh, a piece of state we're going to store it in something called an atom uh, and an atom is updatable you can subscribe to it and anything subscribed to it you know re-renders works just like local state but it's at kind of a, a global level so the first thing we need to do is we need to make sure that wherever we want to use this these states um needs to be wrapped in a component called recoil root um and we're just going to add that as an import so import uh, we call root from from recall. Cool. So now anything within this um, has access to anything that the all pieces of state that recall has. And now we're going to create our atom. And note here we're creating it at the the global level, so this isn't tied to a specific component. So we're going to create. We're going to call this uh, I guess username state, um, and we create an atom just by using the atom function and this takes in a uh, an object um, with a key and this is a unique key for this piece of state so let's call that username and then it also takes in a default so this is very similar to the existing state that we had we used default uh, as read earlier on so that's what we're gonna we're gonna start off with I'm just gonna make sure that this is imported so this atom form recall let's minimize that and now instead of using you use state um, uh, recall has something called use recall state uh, i'm going to import that and instead of taking in the default we're going to use the state that we defined uh, i think we call it using state and that's it uh, it looks very much like standard react uh, it has the same interface or the same api as a standard hook and you can see that everything here is working as we expected um, so yeah this is perfect so next step is adding it to the to the nav bar right and we can essentially copy this and just go into here add a p tag username there we go so we've added it it's in sync perfect um, now because we know we're not going to set the username here um, what we can do in fact is instead of using recall state we can just use recall value and this just returns the piece of state that we're looking for so i'm just going to import that and that has the exact same effect perfect so that's basically atoms in a nutshell the other side is something called selectors now a selector is a pure function that has access to the existing state 
um, so it has access to all the atoms and any other selectors and it's really its main purpose is to calculate some sort of derived data from the existing state right uh, in terms of using a selector the interface is exactly the same as an atom so they're, they're interchangeable um, so we're going to use that for our character count so we're going to take this atom that we have and then we're going to get the length um, and that's going to be our selector so in fact we can we can copy this and we can call this uh, our count state because it is another another piece of state this is a selector instead of an atom I'm going to import that it takes in a key as well which needs to be unique so I'm going to call this count and instead of default what it does is it takes in a get property and this is a function oops let's try that again this is a let's do an empty function so this is a function um, to use the java there this is a function which takes in um, another function called get which gives you access to uh, all the existing atoms right so inside here we can say constant username so i'm gonna i want the, the, the username state and we can use this this get function here to get that and we do get and we pass in the state just like we did below in the the use recall state and use recall value so now we have the username we can now just return whatever derived data we want in this case we want to return the username length um, perfect so now we can use count state um, what we want so what we're going to do is i'm just going to create our count component pop it below oops there we go the body and there we go and this is just going to have count oops uh, take this away so what we're going to do is the same way we use the yeah the username recall here we'll copy paste that we'll call this one count recall value now instead of using the username state we just want the the count state and the final step is just to add the count here and there we go so you can see on the right hand side um, the count is three which is the kind of the default value we have the nav bar and the name and as we change all of these we can see that the values are updating so if you have used redux in the past you can see that the, the kind of the boilerplate or the initial code here is very very minimal um, it feels like you're you know in react it's, it's you know it's looking very cool um, and i think that's that's pretty much it that's uh recall in a nut, nutshell so yeah let me know what you think in the in the comments below and thank you for thank you for watching